drowned in the depth of the sea. Children the hope of mankind. In the entire world, there is no one who would say he or she cares for children apart from the ones he or she bears. And whoever cares, loves and receives the little children, along with his or her own deserves God's blessing. The injunction, which is contained in the second lesson calls for a universal love for children all over the world. Do not be harsh to little children, rather treat them fine, receive and care for them, for in so doing you have received Christ. I want you to know, if you do this with honesty, you will have your ways opened, and the good things of life will be given to you. The little children do not lie, steal, murder, bear malice etc. They do not commit sin. And so, if you receive and love them, it invariably means you love Christ. Whosoever does not sin is Christ and so any child who does not commit any sin is Christ. I personally do not toy with the little children, I want them first in everything here in the kingdom. This is so, because they are the future leaders and above all, they are the kingdom of God. If you were to understand the importance of the children of God in this kingdom, you would not toil with them. It is quite normal to use earthly things to illustrate the heavenly ones, hence, this illustration. Illustration. There once lived a very wealthy kid who had no child. He tried everything within his capability to see that his wife was pregnant and give birth to a child, but all to no avail. He then took a challenge to the whole world that whosoever shall cause his wife to give birth to a child, will get a handsome reward from him. He even promised to make such a person a millionaire. One day, the wife of the rich kid, the queen, was standing at the balcony of her story building, and as she turned to look down, she saw a young man parading the compound, she then called on him to come up. The young man complied. On inquiry about his background the man told the queen, he had four children, and had since been living in someone's veranda, but the owner of the house has ordered him out with his children. He went further to intimate to the queen, one of his sons came by an envelope containing five pounds, as they were roaming the street in search of shelter, and that he is using the five pounds to buy empty bottles and cans for resale, so that he might use the proceeds therefrom to feed his family. On hearing this story, the queen was moved with pity. She ordered that the stewards, cooks, gardeners and all those concerned with housekeeping in the king's compound should be supplying the young man with empty bottles and similar containers, as a way of assisting the young man to fend for his family. After this, it was not long until the young man returned to the king's compound for containers. This second time the queen gave him money and ordered he should go and bring his four children to live in the king's palace. And so when the young man finally brought his children, the queen went and narrated the story to the king and solicited for maximum care for them. She told the king, it is God that has given them those children. She condemned the thousands of pounds they had spent on native doctors and others in the name of looking for children. She then decided to devote her whole time and fortune for the training of those children. From then, the queen saw herself as not having the need for her own children anymore. Rather she claimed those children to be hers forever. The king also consented to this. The children had no alternative but to become part and parcel of the king's household. The last born of the four was still a baby, and with paces, she took the baby as her newborn baby. This baby slept with the queen, soiled her bed and yet, received the necessary care from the queen. In spite of this, people started telling the queen, they can't help her give birth to her personal child, but the queen was always shunning them. She made them understand she had no need for any other child, and that she has gotten the children she needed. She stood her ground that nobody can deceive her and dupe her in the name of helping her to get pregnant anymore. She was contented and happy with these four children and as such, had no need for more. As God would have it, the following month, she discovered that she had missed her menstruation, but she did not take it for pregnancy. After a few months, the family doctor was called in to examine the queen. The doctor, having carried out a comprehensive test, told the queen, she was pregnant. This report did not bother her at all, instead, she saw the state as sickness. A couple of months passed, the situation remained the same. At the expiration of nine months, she gave birth to a male child. This was the time she became convinced, she was truly pregnant. And she counted her first child, as the fifth child she had. As the years passed by, she personally gave birth to four children, two boys and two girls, just as she adopted. Even after giving birth to four children, she did not alter the seniority rank. 
The first of the adopted children remained the most senior heir of the family. The second, third, fourth to the last born from her remained the last. She did not discriminate or treat any of the children with concession. All the children enjoyed equal love from the queen. Note that only four children were collected from the young man. He was given money to go and feed with the wife. But when eventually things turned out this way, the queen reminded the king of the need for the young man and the wife to be accommodated and cared for too, and this was done. Have you now realized the reward of receiving and caring for children? In spite of the fact, the king was rich, was he able to get children with the aid of his position in the society and money? No, he had those children, because he received other children and cared for them. I want you to note, the problems of the world emanate from the world's neglect and indeed, outright disregard for children. If you practice this gospel, your life will definitely change for the better. Try it. The good luck, wealth, protection, influence and power that you want are constituted therein. If you love and receive the little children, all those and many more good things will come to you. Read the golden text again. Golden text, Matthew chapter 19 verses 13 to 15. Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them, and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not, to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them, and departed thence. Children, the foundation of this kingdom. How else do you want to be told about the importance of little children in the kingdom of God, and the blessings derivable from receiving and loving them? Having read this statement of our Lord Jesus Christ, in fact, his view on this issue, you have no cause whatsoever to claim ignorance of the extent to which children are rated in the kingdom of God. Jesus the Christ spared nothing rebuking the disciples for sending the little children away from his presence, for he regarded them as the owners of the kingdom of God. The statement of our Lord Jesus Christ, Suffer little children, and forbid them not, to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven, demonstrated practical brotherhood. He says the little children should be received and loved and having said so, he took them by their little hands and strolled with them. Have you not seen this action in this kingdom today? This accounts for the reason, why brotherhood is often referred to as the church for the little children. In this kingdom, we have no alternative than to practice the words of Christ hence, we value the little children and treat them fine, because they can do everything in this kingdom. They can pray, sing, read the Bible, even conduct a full service. Most members of this kingdom were brought into this kingdom by their children. Most of your testimonies and in fact the most sensitive and interesting ones are at the instance of your children. They are the ones that know what this kingdom stands for. Their joy and faith in this kingdom surpasses that of the grown-ups in the fold. The children are the ones that actually and truly rejoice in Christ and Christ is always with them. Based on this fact, you are at liberty to get whatever you want from God, provided you receive these little ones and love them. Be it known to you, the expansion and remarkable growth of this kingdom is connected to the way children are treated in this kingdom. I do not toy with them and they too, do not toil with me. One brother once testified, whenever he does not want his child to do a particular thing he detests, he will tell the child, if he attempts to do it again, he will not take him, the child, to the father's presence anymore. And with that, he said the child will never do that thing no matter what happens. He went further to say, it is the child who forced him to come to the hall every time, for he is always worrying him to bring him, the child, to the holy father's presence. Children know, the father loves them and they love him too. They do not rejoice in any instruction that is geared towards stopping them from having physical access to the father. When I said, people should not come to see the father in the vestry, they were not happy. They were sad and looked awful. I want you to start to condition your minds towards treating the little ones with love and care, as is the will of God for all men. Avoid doing anything to hurt the little ones. If you hurt a child with the pretext of correcting him, put yourself into fervent prayer. Whenever you beat up a child, you have done same to Christ. It is very easy to teach a child something, provided your teachings do not deviate from the father's teachings. If you teach any child what the father teaches, he will never hesitate to learn from you. It is wrong and indeed a serious crime for a sinner or somebody with evil tendencies to go near a child for anything's sake. This is so, because they are like the mirror, reflecting exactly what is placed before it. 
That is the reason why, if you hang a very ugly mask or photograph in a room where a pregnant woman